I would say very simply, it gives sense of life. Because uh, with artists, you can't cheat, you can't lie. You know, you go through the person to go to the heart of the person. You can't talk about art if you are not sincere. So that's the reason why artists, whatever uh, the nationality they have, or where they come from, they understand each other quite easily. Natalie Beras was born on the picturesque Caribbean island of Martinique. In her childhood, she was fascinated by the bright paintings of Henri Matisse and Marquet. But despite her passion for art, Natalie chose the profession of a diplomat. And since 2018, she has headed the main department of the culture of France in Ukraine, the French Institute. This is not only the most popular place to learn French since 1994, but also the main center of Ukrainian-French cooperation in the arts. We have different um, steps of uh, co-production. When we speak about co-production, it's really when we create a, a unique uh, piece of art uh, with two teams and a French and Ukrainian artists. Uh, it, it's really a wonderful thing to do uh, because this is the crossword of two cultures and two words. What have Ukrainian and French artists in common? Uh, is perhaps the fact that they are looking for emotions, deep emotions, in all ways. And how to convey this emotion to public? Mostly artists, French and Ukrainian artists, uh, try to be sincere and convey this emotion. And for example, a very nice co-production that was made is, was the hip-hop ballet motion uh, that was uh, co-produced and uh, who has a huge success in France, for example. And we have also uh, Lucy Berilovich's play Antigone, uh, who had a huge success too. So each co-production we, we did was very successful, but it requires a lot of people and a lot of time, so we would like to do more, and we intend to do more, but uh, we have also our limits. The French Institute works in different directions. It invites French masters to work in Ukraine and also supports local artists. Let's talk about uh, Adeline Kael, a French photographer, who is working in Ukraine for many months already on a project based on night train. It's really interesting and she's exhibiting and she will exhibit again. We have also Ukrainian artists that we support the works by Ukrainian painter Nadia Antanets were noticed by the French Institute in Ukraine during the Inktober World Flash Mob. This action started in 2009 and during this time it united millions of painters around the world. By combining the words ink and October, the organizers created a flash mob to support breast cancer patients. Nadia Antonitz, uh, who made a very subtle work with uh, ink on paper uh, called Pink October. And it's uh, very subtle, it's a reference to the breast cancer uh, during October month. And uh, she made uh, uh, these, um, these uh, watercolors specially for, for, for this occasion. So we try uh, hosting uh, this uh, young Ukrainian artist uh, every four, three, four weeks. We try to support them because for them it's usually the first solo show uh, opportunity. The French and Ukrainians are looking for new formats of cooperation. For example, this year the French Institute will represent a joint animation work entitled One Language, One Vision. This is uh, the project that uh, we made with the uh, Ukrainian studio and with the support uh, of uh, Cultural Ukrainian Fund uh, to create short films uh, about one word which sounds exactly the same in Ukrainian and in French, but that means something else. In 15 seconds, we explain in both French and Ukrainian the meaning of this word. And so we have 
12 words, 12 short animation films. By tradition, the French Institute introduces Ukrainians to French achievements of recent years. The Days of French Cinema has been a popular event for 14 consecutive years. Within the framework of the events, the best novelties of French film production on topics that concern contemporary French people are shown to the Ukrainian audience. This is the 14th edition of uh, the Days of French Cinema in Ukraine. Uh, so this is quite a tradition here. And uh, we make them a movie tour. So uh, it was in Kiev uh, last week and it was a huge success. It's beginning in Kharkiv. And at the end of February, uh, it will be in Lviv, uh, Dnipro and um, Chernitsy then touring to uh, Odessa, uh, Sumy, um, and other towns. We have five of them, but I would like to talk perhaps about two of them because they are, they are completely the opposite. One, we have a comedy uh, with uh, En Liberté, so in freedom. Uh, and uh, this is a very light, uh, entertaining film uh, with the very young and talented actress uh, Adèle Enel. So I invite everybody to, to, to go and see the film. And the other one is quite a tragedy. Uh, it's called Amanda, and uh, it, uh, it uh, tells the story of this young Parisian man, 24 years old man, uh, living day after day, you know, without any involvement or engagements, let's like that, uh, doing small jobs and so on, and whose life uh, completely uh, falls down uh, the day his elder sister dies in the terrorist attack uh, in November 2015. And then he has to take the responsibility of his uh, small niece, uh, seven years old. Another favorite event of the year for admirers of high-quality performances became a series of events titled French Spring. In 2019, the French Spring Festival is held in 10 Ukrainian cities – Kyiv, Dnipro, Kharkiv, Lviv, Odessa, Rivne, Zaporizhia, Ivano-Frankivsk, Berdichev and Chernivtsi. The French Spring is really um, an important date in our agenda, in the Ukrainian agenda, in the French agenda. Uh, why? Because uh, this is uh, the 16th edition and this year we will organize and have about 100 events, cultural and artistic events, all around Ukraine. There are a lot of very various um, artistic uh, events, not only music, but also theatre, movie, dance, street art, live performances. For example, the opening ceremony in Kiev, uh, the 30th of March in uh, San Sophie Square. Uh, it will be a, a street show by uh, la Compagnie Trans Express uh, that will start on the ground and then uh, go up on the air. It will be magic. Popular stars from Paris will also visit this great event. This time, ballet dancer of the Paris Opera Francois Alou will visit Ukraine. We will have, we will invite uh, our French main dancer of the French National Opera of Paris. Uh, whose name is François Alu. He will play here at the Opera uh, the 14th of April. For example, uh, but we will have so many, you know, uh, bands and uh, theatre groups that uh, I can't quote all of them. Uh, but honestly, we will have design also, and then an exhibition in the store. The main feature of the French Spring 2019 festival is color. 
Ukrainian masters will also be involved in the creation of a colorful program. I like very much to talk uh, with artists. We recently to talk with uh, uh, Petro Lebedinets. Uh, which is uh, one of the leading representatives of um, the School of Ukrainian Modern Art here in Kiev. And I was very much impressed by uh, his paintings. Uh, very huge diptychs and triptychs uh, uh, made of colors. And uh, why I want to underline that is because we decided this year for the French Spring to have one topic, one theme, and this is colors. So uh, we will try to unite all our 100 events around colors. Those who want to satisfy not only the soul but also the body have a good opportunity to enjoy delectable French cuisine in Ukrainian restaurants within the framework of the event. Indeed, Ukraine joined the project Goût de France. Within the framework of this fantastic gastronomic initiative, restaurants in 150 countries of the world invite the public to a genuine French dinner. And this year, the region that was chosen is Provence, south of France. So I invite all Ukrainian restaurants that want to participate in, in this uh, world event, because it's organized all over the world, uh, to try to invent some flavors, some taste of south of France. As 2019 is declared to be the year of the French language in Ukraine, special celebratory events await residents and guests of the country. As you know, we usually have the days of Francophonie. But this year, as of course, it's a special year for us, uh, we will do in a different format. And so we will organize together uh, events with uh, the French-speaking embassies in Kiev. For example, Canada, very active. Uh, of course, Switzerland, Belgium, uh, Morocco, and all the other ones. We are working very closely with them in order you know, to organize a French spelling test, when an ambassador uh, visits a class in a school, uh, and, and so on. And of course, marathon of Francophonie. So the diplomatic team, but not also, run uh, with the colors of Francophonie. Not only is the Ukrainian public looking forward to performances of talented French artists, as Parisians already know and love Ukrainian performers. We have uh, Ukrainian uh, artists already known in France and that our French public appreciate. I would like to talk uh, about, for example, the, the Dach Daughters, mm -hmm. uh, the very famous band, and also the Habracha. We have uh, also uh, some um, classical or folkloric music, uh, which is very much appreciated. You just have to say, for example, uh, the fact that um, all tickets for Vierski Ballet uh, that uh, played uh, at Palais des Congrès, uh, so at the end of last year, were all sold out. So Parisian uh, public very much appreciates uh, uh, Ukrainian artist. According to Natalie Beras, a link between France and Ukraine can be traced if to delve a bit deeper into the biographies of certain French musicians and artists. Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais. It's my favorite song. It's like that. Uh, is French musician, French singer Serge Gainsbourg. And I have to say that it is quite interesting to like Serge Gainsbourg because uh, he has some Ukrainian origins. His mother was from Odessa. So you see, when uh, you look for a bit uh, beyond French musicians, you sometimes find, or French artists, you sometimes find uh, uh, Ukrainian artists. 